recording as she knows a video I'm I'm bailing some really really terribly thin hay right now. Uh wheat hay. I was gonna it's gonna be a live stream. Uh but I was listening to Pandora and that was just a lot more interesting than trying to read comments while you're bouncing around in the track here. Uh, but it's, it's like 1 or 2 o'clock in the morning right now. Uh, got kind of a 20, 20 mile an hour wind, 18 mile an hour wind. So our humidity is not, like we're probably barely at 50% humidity. I don't, I definitely don't think we've ever hit 60% yet. Uh, so it's actually keeping the dew from setting, which is good. It's been getting more hay baled. Uh, but at, at the same time, it, this hay is super, super thin, so it's, it's just, it's, it's wheat, so it's still shattering, and, you know, the wheat was only like a foot tall to begin with, so when it starts shattering in half, you know, it's not like baling hay anymore, it's like baling straw, and I've only had it plug on me once and that was the first bale of the night and it got to about 50 inches and all of a sudden that, that feed just fell out and that's all she wrote so I actually had to slow down uh, a lot slower than I was going last night and this feed is thinner than it was last night so we barely made a bale to the acre last night that's how terrible this stuff is but it's, it's money either way. Uh, I was going to do a live stream because I got a lot of people asking me about my Massey Baylor. Because um, it's hay season. And so I know this, I'm not going to be able to get you a video right now of the machine running because I'm in, in the cab. I actually don't have anybody who can even run this machine. Uh, I'm the only one who's run it. But I'm also a one-man operation. My dad bailed for me for a while when I had my deer bailers. Uh, but that's... He didn't do any bailing for me last year. But so far in... I'm bailing like the nastiest stuff that you can bail. It's terrible. It doesn't want to, you know, this short stuff doesn't want to feed. I, it's, this stuff is worse than a long crop by any means. And so, I'm, I'm very impressed with the baler so far. I'm extremely impressed. Um, I'm waiting to run out of net wrap to double check one thing, but I think I was being an idiot while I was uh, changing my rolls. I th I'm pretty sure that <laughs> I found a button. It's at the top of the screen. It's a, it's a green circles, green circle of arrows. There's two arrows, and you know I made the comment to a couple guys that you know this. I went from two uh, uh, deer balers where there's a button that says wrap, and so you just hit the wrap button when you want to wrap a medium sized bale or. When you load a new roll of net wrap in, you just push wrap and it feeds it in and starts the process. Well, this still has a, oh, it's got a little hand for manual and you go through and you hold it down for so long and the net starts running and you, you release it and you hold down the, the scissor button, I don't know, for how, if you hold it down for a while or, or you quickly press it, that's giant pain in the ass, needless to say, I've had, I remember, I figured it out last year, and I'd forgotten, and the, one of the bales probably got like 20 rounds of wrap on it, before I finally just opened the damn chamber and cut it and rerun it, uh, but there's this button up here, and it's, it's the, it's the manual, it's the automatic wrap button. You just push it and it just wraps the bale. So I think I was just being an idiot. Uh, 
it's just kind of like shit. Oh, I didn't open my deal up. Uh, so, I'm on a, this is a job I've been on for, oh, on and off for the past two weeks, and we're finally where we can bail. Uh, we had some rains move through beginning of this week. Today is Saturday. We had some rains move through on Tuesday. You know, it dropped quite a bit of rain. We actually had a couple different days of rain move through and dropped quite a bit of rain. So, you know, that put us down. I had a, uh, had a breakdown in my swath. There were actually a couple breakdowns. And that's, that's kind of where I'm going with this video is I'm going to talk about uh, kind of what's been going on with that and just custom hay work in general. Um, so I've got a, for those of you who don't know, I've got a 9870 Massey Ferguson 2015 and it's a hell of a machine. Uh, it's even, it's a lot better. I finally got my damn GPS worked out where I can, uh, got that flashed and fixed, that was giving me hell, uh, and that wasn't the Swather's fault, that was Omnistar decided to completely update their whole system, and so unless you flashed your globe, it reverted back to, like, an old style, an old deal, and it just threw... It's probably fine for going back and forth, but on, on center pivots, it threw everything into a, like an X shape. So that was aggravating. Got that fixed. Uh, been having a lot of problems with, uh, so you got your two conditioner bearings, and then you have a wind roller bearing. Or you have your two conditioners, and then you have a, a helper roller or wind roller that sits under them right behind that cutter deck. And that helps throw the feet up into the conditioners. I've been having a lot of trouble losing the bearing on that thing or losing... Um, there's a flange plate that the bearing bolts to and the flange plate bolts to the header. And the reason they do that is so they can get that roller in and out. Um, and I just, I've been having hell with it shelling bearings on one side on the drive side of the machine on the drive side of that hill and <coughs> or the bolts working loose the bolts will sit there and vibrate and they get worn out and then the thing gets really loose and it'll it'll blow a bearing out of it it'll get a bad vibration and I mean it'll do it quickly and so I'm, I'm on my, I, I welded the plate in place in one place and all new bolts and everything. Well, it snapped the weld and killed all the deals and all the bolts and it, and it broke a, it toasted the bearing out. So I got a new plate, I had a new plate had a new bearing, put it on there, put all new bolts on it with, uh, with, uh, all that plastic block head on it, big washers, because the, the nuts were eating into the, the flange, and they do that on the bearing, too, the bearing's got a cast housing around it, and the damn nuts will eat into that cast housing, that happened today, and I don't know what the hell it is, I really didn't know, well, uh, last week, yeah, I was on one circle. Uh, so I do a lot of custom work, and on wheat fields, they're not smooth. They're rougher than rough. I'm actually cutting on some alfalfa now, now that it's just, it's so nice because they're smooth. I, it is just amazing how nice it is to cut in a smooth field. So when you cut in a lot of rough fields, it causes a lot of damage. There's a lot of rocks, there's a lot of just, just pain in the ass stuff. And the, 
vibrations are eating up the bolts. And today I finally, I put a new bearing on it and a new housing on it 200 acres ago. The nuts today had eaten completely into the housing, so it allowed the bearing housing to loosen up. It snapped the flange at the bottom. <coughs> And I had a, I had enough of it. I'm trying to cut some alfalfa, and so I took the drive shaft off. And when I start the machine up, start the header up, it's got a bad vibration in it. And I don't, you know, if you any little thing can cause a vibration, but it, it's a kind of a, a loping vibration. Well, I took the drive shaft off to that helper roller, and. No more vibration. So we figured out what happened and why we're having so much trouble. Well, towards the very end of last year, one of the last jobs that we had, um, we hit the gearbox off off a pivot. Somebody left it in the field. The wheat grew up around it, and it broke one of the sun gears in the cutter bed and, and took out the bearing and this, that, and another, and we fixed it. Got it all fixed, everything bolted back up, and I've just been having problems with, you know, things coming loose, but it it wasn't bad enough, and most cutter bars are, you know, most headers have a vibration to them anyway, you know, whether we usually end up with a lot of mud on our cutter deck when we're doing a uh, wheat and that causes really bad vibration. So it's not something out of the out of the normal to have a vibration on it. And we don't know 100%, but I'm, I'm pretty sure what happened is that damn gearbox hit that bottom roller before it hit those conditioners and it bent it just, just enough. It bowed a little and we're getting a bite. We're getting, it's not taking the bearing out on the passenger side of the machine, which is about six foot away from where that gearbox hit. But it's taking the bearing out about two foot from where that thing hit. And so we think there's a, it's got a little loop to it, a little bow to one side, and it's completely, it's just, that's what's causing our assay. So, I have put, I put a, I ended up having to put a gearbox in, I had a bearing go out in the gearbox, um, probably going to have to put a new roller in, the gearbox, all that work was $5,200, uh, I had to do some other stuff, <coughs> but it shelled the gearbox, then, this roller is $2,300, so that's going to be, by the time we get bearings and flange plates and bolts and a new drive shaft, you know, we're going to be anywhere from twenty-six to 3000 so we're at 8000 in parts, just right there, 8200 and then I bought $2,800 worth of parts. Um, this spring before I started new skid plates a lot of skid plates and uh, new turtles and this that and the other I always keep a lot of spare parts on me because when you do break down you need to get it fixed right then you can't because we're always like an hour away from anything so you know we're at well, what were we at there? Eight and eight and you know we're right at right at eleven thousand dollars already in in just parts. And man, it I, I will I will say this. I've had a lot of people ask me about you know they say they want to do custom work, a lot of custom paint. I do in custom hay because I can't buy tractors and equipment for 
for my own farming and justify the expense. I don't farm, I don't have that much farm ground. Uh, I can't justify doing it. And I need something that's decent. I need, you know, I don't need a brand new swather. I don't need the swather that I have for my farming. But I have, you know, it's it has its own jobs to pay for it. So, you know, the swather payment's 25000 a year. You're looking at 30000 that thing has to make just to cover fuel and expenses and the payment. But you throw another 11000 on that, you know, 12000 you're creeping up there pretty good, 36000 37000 um, That's a lot of damn ground that you've got to cover. A lot of ground that you got to cover. So, what I'm trying to what I'm trying to say is, is there's a couple ways to look at going about getting into the custom pay business. Number one, if you're going to do a lot of it, you're going to, the best thing to do is buy good equipment to begin with or work your way into good equipment because used equipment you're gonna put a lot of parts into it. Um, last year, I had like one breakdown with my swapper. Really didn't have much trouble with it. Last year was a good year. This year, I because of what happened towards the end of the season, and you know, just it wasn't noticeable. It's eaten my ass up on parts, and it's very expensive. <laughs> I used to have two John Deere round balers that were used. They ate me up on parts. They were well used. Uh, just with, I, I think there was a little bit of time there where I actually had both machines in good working order. One of them was always broke down. You know, high bale machines one was always broke down. I bought this machine and my payments on this machine are cheaper than my payments on 20,000 bale machines with parts. And this damn thing hasn't broke down yet. And it has warranty. Um, you don't have to buy a brand new machine right away. The only benefit to buying a brand new machine is, you know, compared to a, a new machine that has a little bit of use on it, is you get really used to how the machine is supposed to run. Um, because if you buy a used machine, there can be little things here and there that, you know, is... Is that really a problem of the machine itself or is that a problem from the previous owner? And it's really hard to tell that and that can be very aggravating. And so you really got to justify your what you think you can spend. Um, you know, this baler here is definitely a good purchase for me for my own operation because I put up I put up my own game um, and I put up a good amount of it and so far this is a very very reliable machine and I have very very minimal complaints Deer makes a fantastic machine. They really do. Massey Ferguson makes a fantastic machine. Uh, my deciding factor on to going with the Massey Ferguson machine is number one, our dealer support is hands down the best. Absolutely the best. Uh, I call up my you know, to, it's Labor Day weekend. Everyone's off work. I called up. I called up their parts department today. They know what machines I have. 
they know, you know, they know the, the, the cutter, the, the header that's on my machine. I can call them up and say, hey, I got a bearing, I need a flange without part numbers. They said, we got you. Are you coming in right now? We will meet you there. Uh, or we will have somebody there to help you out. It, their living stints at a Dalhart is where I get my service from, and they are phenomenal. I have absolutely no complaints. Those are the greatest guys in the world. That's why I run Massey Ferguson Equipment, testing equipment, because number one, <clears throat> even with the problems I've had with my Swather this year, that's not that machine's fault. And we ran a big pile of shit into it. Uh, honestly, if we had known what we could have done, you know, maybe insurance would have taken care of it. But we're a year later now, and we're finding all the little gremlins in it. Uh, so that just sucks. But that's a phenomenal piece of equipment. It truly is. I will not buy a John Deere mower because we do not have the support to back it up. I'm not saying my dear dealer couldn't figure it out, but I don't think they could figure it out in an hour or two and have it up and running. If I truly needed uh, somebody from Livingston's to come work on my machine and if there was somebody physically able to come, they would come and that machine would be going. Or they would be like, I could haul it to them and I would be back in the field. You know, it might be that night, might be that afternoon, but that machine would be going. Uh, they And they stocked the parts. You know, they stock the parts or they can get the parts their next day. Our John Deere dealer can't. If their parts aren't in Dallas, they can't get them for a couple days. And it might be, you know, who knows with them. Um, our, uh, our ad code dealer, they have a, enough locations and they deal with it so much that they will have people driving between locations who will bring you the parts. And that's, that's, that's what you need. It doesn't matter if you've got New Holland or John Deere or, or Agco, if you're gonna go into the custom hay business, if you're gonna buy a machine, you need to look at who has the parts because number one, every machine out there is gonna break at some point. So you need to get it back in the field as fast as you can because it ain't making you money if it's sitting. And like my swather, yes, I'm upset that I've had to put some parts into it this year because honestly, I need, I need that money in my pocket. I really do. I need that money for other things. I don't need to be you know, I'm having to add way more acres just to cover my my parts this year. And I I think I might have found the acres. I'm really hoping I do. I've gotten onto this one deal. I really hope it pans out because that will cover those expenses. I can't afford <coughs> to have anything else in my operation cover my custom paying expenses. I, my custom hay operation has to be self-contained and it has to be self-sufficient. I cannot put money into it. Um, this tractor that I'm in now, my custom hay operation needs to pay for it so I can use it at the ranch. And that's, so you, you can see where having good equipment is a very, very important thing for me. And, you know, right now we're on some really terrible ground. Uh, it's not making hardly anything. I'm hoping we got a couple more circles that'll catch us back up. Because uh, we need the money to make our payments. And we need the money to cover our fuel. And we damn sure need it to cover parts now. So, it's... 
if you're if you're not gonna do a lot of custom work, then it's okay. You don't have to have the bell of the ball on your farm. You can. I if I wasn't doing custom work, I'd still have my 568 John Deere Baylor. And by now, I'm sure that net wrap system would be completely rebuilt on it because that thing was a pain in my ass. <coughs> And I probably have quite a few new bearings into it. Because that was definitely a pain. So, you can see where I'm going. If you're not going to be doing a lot of custom work or just a lot of ground in general, you know, that bale, that baler had 20,000 bales on it, I'd still be using it. Because on 100 acres, that's all you really need. Now, where I'm I'm doing uh, I'm doing a lot of custom work now. I uh, you need a new bin. I mean that's for me. You could get a used baler, a good used baler, but you're still never gonna know whether that's the way the baler's acting or that's from the previous owner. And for me, it's better just to get a new baler and go from there. So far, that's what I think. But uh. Yeah, I, I'm just a little wound up by how much damn money I'm having to pull out of my ass right now for parts, and so I thought that this would be a good video. Now, if you stuck here for this long, uh, I'll kind of show you the screen. This, I put it, one of my cameras on here. That's the throat of the baler. That's the actual bale. I just put net wrap on it. That's the feeder roller. Um, of course, our monitor here. And so, what I'm doing, see, that's the feeder roller spinning now. And you can actually see the belts right there. You can see the little deals. Um, the reason why I did that is so I can see that hay feed into that house. And where I'm in some really nasty hay, I can actually see that hay start to plug before I ever hear it plug. And that's actually a very, very nice thing to have. I already had the camera. They're not that expensive. They're like 260 bucks if you've got it on, you know, it saves your neck. It's, in essence, it's a very nice thing. It saves your neck. And if you're bailing 12 hours at a time, that's pretty pretty important to have um, I got my moisture meter up here it doesn't work worth a shit uh, I actually got my handheld meter in the tractor because I was talking to a friend I don't know what the hell is wrong with that thing it doesn't work at all yeah uh, when you first start a bale it actually works uh, when we first start a bale they're down 13% right now but by the time you get to the end of the bale or when the meter first starts testing, like I'm at 27% right now. When I get, like last night I hit like 50, 60%, got out, tested it with my moisture meter, and it was uh, 16, and that was right before the dew set. So I don't know, I think a lot of it's friction or something, something's wrong with it. I'm not very happy right now. Uh, cause I drilled two holes in my fucking baler and to put it in there, so, you know, but I'll get it all figured out, so, I'm, and maybe I, it's not making, I don't know what's wrong, but I've been watching it when it first starts, and it starts where we're actually very close to what we're testing with our handheld tester, um, and when you go to dump it, after it, it dumps, it'll start, It'll get down there, so. I'm not very impressed with it right now. But anyways, that's kind of how I got my setup. I got that there. That says 17. It was at 30 a minute ago. Now it's at eight. I don't know. I really don't know what's up with it. But uh, anyways, thanks for tuning in. If you made it this far into the video 
I really do appreciate it. Uh, leave a comment, especially if you, especially if you made it all the way here. Leave a leave a comment saying you made it to the end because that's I I do really appreciate it. I'm gonna get back to bailing. I've got a I bailed till four last night. Uh, went home, slept till about 9:30 this morning and cut hay and I'm gonna do the same thing all over again. I'm gonna load my swather up Monday morning and go start silage. So I'm gonna be a little busy. Stay tuned for more.